Hey guys, how's it going? So today's video is going to be really interesting because today I'm going to talk about how to get an admission for a PhD in physics in Europe and especially in Germany. And if you're an Indian watching this video, then my experiences are going to be all the more useful for you because I'm an Indian as well and now I'm pursuing my PhD in physics in Germany. So first of all, I like to give you a brief background about me. So I did my bachelor's and master's in physics from the University of Delhi back in India. And then I was looking for PhD in India as well as in Europe. Now the reason I wasn't looking for PhD in America is because you might know that in America you need to get admitted to a graduate school and essentially you do a master's once again and since I had already done my master's I didn't want to do the same again in America and therefore the PhDs in America can also be very long taking somewhere between five to seven years and I didn't want to waste so much of my time doing masters once again. Now the next best thing was Europe and UK but unfortunately I had to cross out UK from the list as well because they have moved out of the European Union and now they have very strange laws regarding the um, hiring of individuals from countries like India. So the problem was that they have decided not to pay individuals coming from India. So for example, if you are a European and you want to get a PhD in Britain, that is okay, you will be paid your salary. However, if you are an Indian, then you will have to arrange your salary somehow by applying for some scholarships, fellowships, etc which was not very easy for me. And that is why I then focused all my attention towards Europe. Now, there are basically two ways uh, in which you can apply for a PhD program in Europe. In Europe, primarily um, what you do is you write to a professor directly, emailing him about your interests, your past research, your CV, etc and hope for the best. Another good thing about applying in Europe for a PhD was that I did not need a TOEFL or a GRE or even an IELTS exam. So basically since the European countries are not primarily English speaking, they do not require you as well to have these um, certifications either. Now coming to the application portion, now the way to go about for me was what I did was I basically uh, got down the rankings of the various universities from various uh, websites and then just started shortlisting some professors that were relevant to my research interests. Sometimes I found some PhD positions that were advertised on these professors' websites and you had to basically go through these portals and prepare an official application along with your CV, statement of purpose, mo motivation letter and all this uh, documentation as well as some recommendation letters from your previous uh, supervisors. However, when I did not find such a program being advertised on the website of the professor or the department, then I basically wrote an email to them. In the email, I basically wrote about my previous re research experiences and how these re research experiences were totally relevant with the work that they have been doing and were interested in. It also helps if you read a research paper or two of your potential supervisor, but you can usually get a good idea about the research on from the website. So it's not really needed, but you might do it for maybe the interviews. Now, personally, in my email, what I did was the email looks something like a motivation letter and then I just attached my CV and some other work related to my past research and that was basically it. Now what I found was that when I wrote an email directly to the professor, it wasn't 100% guaranteed that they will reply back but in case they did, it was only when their research interests matched very much with my past research experience. And if they are interested, then they basically reply back and ask you to schedule an interview date and the interviews are not very hard. Especially I found this to be the case for German universities so whenever these professors interview you they are not really asking you a lot of technical questions this is based on my experiences as well as my friends experiences so they don't ask you a lot of technical questions rather what they want is they want to see how motivated you are and how good your past research was and if you do good in the interview, then they basically offer you the job. And one interesting thing about my experiences was that my supervisor didn't even ask for any recommendation letter. They offered me the job on the spot and yeah, that was it. However, if you have applied to some PhD program, which was advertised on the university website, then there are two problems that I basically noticed. That first of all, there are a lot of applicants. So basically, your competition increases really a lot. And also, you require a lot of documentation to be submitted. For example, you require more motivation letter, maybe a statement of purpose, 
a very nice looking CV and that should adhere to their guidelines so you cannot just use your previous CV and mail that in. Also um, you may require recommendation letters and so on. So I found that writing to the professors directly was much better and a very common way to get a PhD in European universities, especially Germany. In addition, if you're Indian then you can apply to German universities through the DART scholarship. So that might be very useful for you so I'll recommend that you check that out as well. Now finally I would also like to mention some key differences between PhDs in America, India and Europe. So if you get a PhD in India then basically it goes on for something like five to seven years and within the first year or two you do some course works which is basically some you attend some courses you pass the exams and so on and then you do the research and the situation is very similar in America where you do a master's in the first two years however in Europe you directly start your research so when I came to Germany I started my research straight away without attending any courses however it's not like you don't need to study at all because you need do need to attend at least one course uh, during your PhD which is not directly related to your subject and then you just need to give a viva exam for this course with the lecturer teaching the course as well as your supervisor since you are not required to study a lot of courses during your PhD the PhDs in Europe can be really short you can get your PhD in somewhere between three to five years which is very nice in my opinion on a final note for Indian applicants I would like to say don't be disheartened if your marks in your masters or bachelors were not that good because I found that if you have a very good re research experience and research background then that counts a lot so basically it is up to you about how good you can sell yourself in the email or the motivation letter that you write so what's most important is that you do very well on your master's thesis as well as some very good research work one confusion that I find among my uh, Indian friends is that they think that it might be very expensive to pursue a PhD in Europe especially Germany given the big currency difference I like to tell them that the reality is very far from it because there is essentially no tuition fees when you come for a PhD in Germany and rather you are paid a handsome amount for example there is something called a TVL 13 position and the PhD students are usually paid something between 50% to 75% of this what this means is depending on the city you are in in Germany you may get somewhere around 1275 euros if you come in the 50% bracket uh, which can go up to like 2000 euros I believe if you come to the 75% uh, bracket it can be even 20 100 euros or something if you are in Berlin so the salaries are very good you don't need to pay any tuition fees so uh, even if you require let's say 1 lakh or 2 lakh Indian rupees to come to Germany you can quickly earn that back within a month or two so my advice would be if it is money that is stopping you then you may take a loan of 1 lakh or 2 lakhs at most that is the most that you will need and you will easily repay it by the end of two months. The transportation is really cheap, the apartments are okay, -ish, the rents are reasonable and you get a very good health insurance. So don't let bad marks or money hold you back in your pursuit of a PhD in Europe, especially Germany. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.